Hi, my name is Dave and I am Military Dial Armour. Welcome to my channel. In this week's video, I'll be painting Trumpeter's KV-1 Ikrami, which is kit number 000357. I'll be painting this kit with the pre-shading method using black and white paint to pick out the details and also to force the modulation through a thinner coat or a thinned down coat of the green paint. I chose this kit because of all the bulk detail and thought it would stand out quite well with this method of painting. So let's get started. I'll start off with primer. In this case I'm using Vallejo Black Primer which is 70602. I'll just give the entire kit a nice coat of the primer, giving it three or four passes with really thin coats not flooding the details just making sure it's got a nice smooth coat of primer and just covering the entire kit I'm constantly moving the airbrush and also the kit or the part of the kit that I'm painting around to get a nice smooth even coat the airbrush I'm using is a Hardin Steinbach Silver Line Evolution with a 0.4mm needle on about 25 psi Once I've got a nice thin layer of primer over the entire kit, I leave it to dry before starting the, the highlights using white. I give the airbrush a good clean, ready for the, the white paint to go in. The white paint is Vallejo Model Air 70. 001. I'll start off with the turret working on the centre of panels to highlight this, those parts of the panel and also any raised detail. As I move on to the side of the turret I start moving in a downward motion to help create a streaking effect and again starting from the top working down so you get some nice modulation with the darker parts of the panel at the lower part and just picking out details so that it highlights the panels quite nicely. I also use a piece of plastic card to mask off the edge of a panel to give the, the, the armour plate a bit of definition and to give it a very stark transition. After the airbrushing highlights, I use a brush and the same white paint and I pick out details such as some of the bolt heads. I also mix up a grey so they're not all the same colour and on both sides of the tank I pick out different bolts to give it some variation as well and also pick out some of the other areas like the tops of the vision slits and also some of the side, the tops of the, the armour plates where it separates. Once I'm happy with the turret, I move on to the lower hull and I repeat the process, just picking out the centres of the panels with the, the white and also raised details with the white paint just to give it highlights. Again, using plastic card to, to bring out a stark contrast in the panel lines. You could always mask it off with masking tape, but I find it a lot easier just using a bit of plastic card or a bit of cardboard. And 
and again once I'm happy with the, the airbrush effect I start applying highlights with a brush again using a mix of white and grey using the two the black and the white to mix up different shades picking out different bulk details and the edges of panels and things And here are some stills of the finished highlights. I mix a simple green from Vallejo Dunkel Gal, which is 70604, and Russian 4BO, which is 70. 609 they're both surface primers but I let them down quite a lot with airbrush thinners I start off with a lighter colour first because it's easier to darken a lighter colour than it is to lighten a darker colour but I'm just going for a, a slightly lighter 4BO and I use more than one colour on the sides of the tank I use a slightly darker tone then on the higher bits I use a slightly lighter tone using more than 4BO but you do need to let the, down, the paint down quite a lot. It's got to be quite thin, so it's very transparent. The more thinners you put in the paint, obviously the less pigment you get, and you also need lower air pressure. But it's quite important for this kind of paint job to use thinner paint so you don't hide the detail or all of what you've put in previously on the highlighting. Just mix it with a pipette. Because the paint's been thinned considerably, about 75% thinners to paint, you need to lower the air pressure to prevent spider webbing and so you can get closer up. The easiest way to do this is with the air valve on the compressor or I use a MAC valve on the end of my airline nearest the airbrush and also I have another airbrush which has a little valve you can do it with from there but it's quite important I, I'm guessing it's about 10 psi just enough so the paint comes out but it's not spider webbing and then I'm just testing it here make sure that I've got the right consistency of paint and the right colour and that it's got a good flow Once the paint is thinned and the air pressure is set, I start the painting process. Just applying a very thin layer of the green. I start on the base of the turret to make sure it's, it's going down nicely. But then I'll work over the, the top and the sides. Just giving it a very thin coat so as not to get rid of all the detail you've put in with the highlights. The paint will appear darker as it goes on, but as it dries, it will thin out quite a lot. Just slowly going over, giving it nice thin coats. Again, just try not to cover up all the hard work you put in with the, the highlighting. I set the turret aside once I've given it a few coats and then move on to the fenders. Again, just giving it a nice thin coat so as not to hide the detail and the hard work you've put in. Once 
once I'm happy with the fenders, I move on to the lower hull. Just giving it nice thin layers of paint. Again, the, the lower hull is painted with a slightly darker green and then the fenders and the upper hull and turret are painted with a slightly lighter green just to give it a bit more of modulation. Once I've achieved the desired effect with the airbrush, I move on to the brush highlights. Again, lightening the colour that I previously used with some more of the dunkle grab, just to give it some highlight tones. Picking out the high spots, like the reason slits, and also the lovely bolt detail, highlighting certain bolts, and also the edges of the panels, just to make it pop a little bit more. And here you can see the, the actual paint effect is, is looking quite good. I'm quite pleased with this, considering I've not done it before. It's, it's actually quite a good end result, and I'm very pleased with it so far. It's a little bit different to modulation, but then you've got to try different things, and it's, I've quite enjoyed this so far. Brush highlights is probably my favourite part of the modulation process on any tank that I've painted. I, I quite enjoy this this step. It does look very stark, but once you do the next step, it does bring it all together. So once I'm happy with the, the brush highlights and the overall paint job itself, I take the lightest colour that I've used for the highlights and I let it down with airbrush thinners or you can use water to about 80-85% thinners and 15% paint and just give it a mist coat over the entire kit which brings all of the work together and it, it um, dulls down the starkness of the paint job and just brings it all together and makes it all work nicely.
and here are some stills of the finished tank i'm pretty pleased with the way the paint jobs turned out and i'm looking forward to the the oil work on it next but i hope you enjoyed the video please come back next week to see the next one and please leave a like or a comment thank you very much for watching